Los Angeles. Exactly. It depends what you you get from Jack and work instead of having a cocktail. The lavish wine. You know, some of the solutions. To sort of give you the even though, you know, hopefully set up a neighborhood kill so easily. That's very important. Well, we just heard that story about the post office, but the economic instability in the past recent years, along with budget cuts, has also left food pantries and soup kitchens of the United States scrambling. It's not just the homeless that these soup kitchens are feeding. The, there are more hungry working people out there now. now. Joining us now is Dennis Mackay. He is the executive director of the Trenton Soup Action Kitchen in New Jersey. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here on Ever Today. It's great to be here. Thank you. Well, let's talk about uh, just the, we talked about the homeless, but it's not just the homeless that you're seeing anymore. What, what's happening? You know, traditionally, when the soup kitchen first started, our, our primary client was the homeless people. Believe it or not, today, our home, the homeless population is only about a third of the people that we serve. We see more young families coming in, uh, people that have lost their jobs, and more senior citizens who are coming in who now find it more difficult to make their ends meet. And this isn't just a phenomenon here in New Jersey, it's a phenomenon throughout the United States. Absolutely. There are probably more than 5,000 soup kitchens around the country that are operating right now. Now, let me talk about the history of TASC, which is, of course, your organization. What is your mission there? Well, our mission's threefold. Number one is obviously to feed the hungry of the greater Trenton area. But we also spend a lot of time and resources on helping people gain skills so that they don't need to come to the soup kitchen. Like we have a, an adult education program where people can get their GED or, or get their scores up so they can take a training program. We have arts programs, uh, two wonderful arts programs, a traditional uh, graphic arts program and a performing arts program. We also have a full-time social worker on site and we have a fully equipped computer lab. And our third part of our mission is to advocate for the needs of the hungry. And how many meals a day do you actually serve there? Yeah, between 600 and 1,000 a day wow. between our main site and our six satellite sites, which are located around the county. And, and people think it's just an urban issue. It's not. We have three satellite sites outside Trenton area, two in Heightstown and one in Princeton. Well, and, and I think that's one of the things uh, that we were, we were talking about earlier uh, off camera, but we were talking about how many folks that might be like ordinary people, they, they live in homes, but they just don't have the money to get food, which is just amazing. That's exactly correct. We find that about 70% of the people that come to task for a meal actually have some sort of income, either through employment or through a fixed income of some sort or another, but they don't have enough in order to make all their ends meet. Now, who's eligible to come to TASC? I mean, do you have any requirements? Do you, I mean, Our do you service is unconditional. Anybody that feels like they need a meal is welcome at TASC. We ask no questions. You don't sign any paperwork. You just come in for a meal. Now, with all these numbers rising and the number of uh, homeless and the needy uh, on the rise because of the economy, and also here in Jersey because of Sandy, we've also seen uh, more folks uh, in need. Do you need a lot more volunteers? We, we actually are very lucky. We have more than 3,000 people a year to come to task to volunteer, so our, our volunteer base is pretty solid. Um, interesting, you mentioned Sandy. Most people think of just the damage that was done at the shore. But we've had people that were affected by Sandy also who have lost some either uh, their jobs or, or some time from work because they worked at companies and or in ways that supported things at, at the beach, and, they, and they've basically been out of work. And I know uh, that you also have, for, to help folks uh, around the nation, you c created a book, uh, if you can tell me about that as well. Yes, um, we have put together a book. Um, a couple of my predecessor and our fundraising consultant along, w along with me, we put together a book called How to Start a Soup Kitchen. And you can download it free off the website, which is howtostartasoupkitchen.org. And it's, it's a, a document that goes from soup to nuts, basically. There's a lot of things that are involved in starting a soup kitchen beyond just putting together a meal. And of course, the, the need is so great. So uh, Dennis McKay, we hope you come back and uh, talk about that book. And thank you so much uh, for coming on and talking about TASC. Great. Thanks again for the opportunity. You got it.